Dr. Geeta Krishna is somebody who doesn't need any uh, introduction in the Ayurvedic sector. As uh, we all now know, of course, if there is somebody who has not known him, uh, it is high time that you should uh, uh, keep up your general knowledge. Right now, uh, Dr. Geeta Krishna is in the traditional uh, medicine unit of World Health Organization and uh, is pushing forward. Uh, what we can do, we as a fraternity can do in the healthcare sector throughout the world. Otherwise, he was also uh, involved in the integrative medical care and Vedanta Hospital. Sir, over to you, sir. And it is looking at traditional medicine as a whole rather than only as Ayurveda, traditional Chinese medicine or camphor medicine uh, or African medicine or the Amazonian medicine which is available in the, in the uh, like, you know, South American region. Uh, we are uh, uh, like uh, very very clearly like like what the um, the, the uh, WHO D director general told about three days before. Uh, we think that traditional medicine is no different from uh, any other medicine. It requires uh, evidence of safety, evidence of efficacy, and uh, like you know, and people should be able to uh, um, like um, uh, get it in their hand, you know, like being in the in in, in in one uh, esoteric place in the world doesn't make uh, traditional medicine uh, uh, globally acceptable. It has to be available globally. So these are two, three things which the with the director general said. Simultaneously, there was a there was a uh, directive uh, from the from the uh, di regional director of African region saying that uh, WHO is seriously looking at traditional medicine, uh, including African medicine and other systems of medicine, uh, systems of traditional medicine, uh, to be used in the in the context of COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And uh, if you look at what has happened in other parts of the world, like uh, especially in, uh, in Western Pacific region where China is there, uh, in, there is a lot of work which has happened in China, in South Korea, in, and, in, and in Malaysia, Malaysia and China, and South Korea are still doing a lot of work in, in this area, even though we do not know officially from officially, but we know for uh, from unofficial sources that you know in the other other parts of the uh, other parts of the People's Republic of China, like Taiwan and all, there are a lot of work which are happening right now. So, uh, uh, so if you come back to the most more regional part of what uh, WHO represents in uh, with India, which is the Southeast Asian region. Uh, there has been a lot of work. In fact, uh, let me start with uh, what we know. Uh, Nepal has come out with a Ayurveda-based clinical practice guideline for management of COVID. Uh, so has Sri Lanka, which is official publications of the uh, federal governments of both the both the member states. And then uh, we also know that India has done a lot of work in this area, you know, like uh, starting. Uh, supporting uh, like you know initiation of clinical trials uh, in uh, public health management programs public prophylactic pro programs uh, in uh, initiating studies into what what is happening in this huge population like we are talking about a million population so so again if you uh, I'm sorry about the technical problem and I understand that you know you're also trying this for the first time I have also not used this platform before but this is all learning time for us so uh, that's okay uh, and I think we will learn uh, all these things very fast. Uh, so, uh, again, coming back to what India is doing, there is a there is a lot of work which is happening in India at this particular moment, uh, which would be very interesting to the Ayurvedic professionals because uh, the the task force which has been created by, uh, by or, or, or put in place by the Ministry of Ayush has done a lot of work. Uh, in fact, uh, gathered a. a, a, a some of the best institutions and the best minds available in the country who had been working for traditional medicine, especially for Ayurveda. Uh, they had, let us say, uh, one of the first things that they did was to have uh, create guidance documents for uh, uh, for for uh, conducting research, clinical research, and also for prophylactic research uh, in, uh, in 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 traditional medicine, especially in Ayush systems. Then uh, they had also uh, come out with gu guidelines for, in, like independent guidelines for management of uh, COVID by each of the system, and simultaneously they had also, simultaneously they had also uh, looked at, um, looked at cre looked at creating integrated uh, uh, treatment modules where you know um, uh, the 
individual discipline can be integrated into the current uh, methodology of management of COVID, which is adopted by the uh, by the, by the uh, government. Uh, so these are all in publication. I am sure that by Monday uh, these should uh, come out as advisories from the government. They had uh, supported clinical trials. They had created four uh, national uh, clinical trials, uh, like in you know, protocols, which has uh, which is very very uh, interesting because one of them they had identified uh, uh, like one of them they decided to go ahead with an immunomodulator. Uh, the second one uh, was a strong uh, uh, Vyadihara medicine or a Doshahara medicine based on the Ayurvedic concept of uh, COVID-19. And then they decided to go ahead with a Vyadihara medicine, which is basically depending upon the, the, the symptoms of COVID-19. And then another one was an antiviral, uh, like a possibly antiviral drug, which they had had some information regarding, which they had researched earlier and had some work, uh, done some work on. So this is quite interesting because uh, they didn't leave any uh, in any spectrum uh, like you know not addressed and uh, took out the best possible things and the most easily available things uh, for study uh, simultaneously i i know that they are looking at uh, collecting data on the U, uh, on the impact of ayush therapy ayush profile axis from uh, approximately 5 million uh, users of uh, ayush uh, from across the country 50 lakh should be considerably enough number of uh, like you know participants to make people really believe and understand the data and you know and really uh, really uh, have authenticity for the data give give support of authenticity to the data uh, then they are also doing uh, uh, longitudinal cohort studies on the large population who are getting profile access of Ayush across the country, which uh, is expected to uh, be more than 200,000 in number. But uh, Ayush, I, I know, is aiming to reach uh, 1 million uh, population in, in this particular uh, possibility. So it is, it, is a, it is a great goal, but at least 200,000 will be uh, studied uh, in different cohorts across the country to find out what is uh, they are all high risk individuals who are working in the covid region uh, or covid area or, or covid areas or in containment zone, zones and we will be able to know what had been the use of ayush uh, ayush profile access uh, interventions in this using this high high data high volume of data uh, in uh, thread uh, they are uh, they are also trying to find out uh, the the uh, problems which the health system has faced uh, they are working with uh, different international organizations, including WHO. They are in discussion with the different international organizations, organizations including WHO, which would at least give us some kind of a picture as, as what Dr. Vinayakan has said just before, uh, like I started speaking, like what are the problems and what are the preparedness which the the health system should be ready with when we are when we are entering into management of uh, epidemics like this. So. Uh, this is what I have to say re regarding the first question which uh, uh, Chaitanya has asked. Uh, I think uh, mm, I had been brief and uh, can we go to the next question please? Uh, uh, you, you know, uh, like uh, Ayurveda, uh, Ayur Ayurveda as such did not need any convincing from my part uh, or anybody's part. Ayurveda is well known uh, in, in by the time uh, i reached who ayurveda is very well known in, uh, in within the who circles itself but uh, the major question is how uh, as you should know world health organization is an intra governmental agency and uh, like you know it is it is decided by the policies and and decisions of many countries it is not it is not an independent organization it has it has a lot of uh, like you know uh, strings attached to it so, uh, the, uh, for so uh, WHO, for them to take a decision on a public health uh, intervention model basis, uh, basis Ayurveda, it requires a little more evidence or a little more uh, convincing in terms of the utility of uh, Ayurveda as a public health modality. You know? Like so, if you look at that, uh, the, the the problem that we will find is that Ayurveda is a public health modality in India. Is a public health modality in, uh, in in Sri Lanka as well as a public health modality in in Bangladesh and Nepal, and you know is is allowed to be practiced in few countries like UAE and you know Switzerland and such places. But here, uh, uh, the, the the most important uh, like the aspect of aspect we have to understand is that uh, Ayurveda as such does not hold the grip 
uh, over the community's health like the modern medicine does at this particular moment you know like there are we are also saying that we can also do some things with the modern medicine is doing uh, we are not being able to convince and come out with a model even though we have several with the clinicians around uh, who are listening will definitely agree uh, there are several uh, we have not been able to come out with a convincing model which will say that uh, this particular uh, possibility is better for the health system or for the community rather than following the modern health model uh, this is more specifically so because the health system the, the entire structure of the health system uh, the channels of the health system is uh, is is ordered and made uh, to to suit the flow of modern medical interventions it is not at all suited or uh, or programmed to to include traditional medicine into it traditional medicine is is working outside the channel or along the channel it is not in the channel so we have to be the we have to form the uh, form some vital we have to take hold of some vital part in the community which of course from an ayurvedic perspective i would say that taking care of the health of the people than the ill health of the people is a major thing which public health would be very much interested in because we can imagine uh, how the how how great the ayushman bharat's program of the government of india can move out to if if we can create a model where in which we prevent people from getting uh, Ill, uh, getting ill you know this is all something which we talk about this is what Ayush, ayurveda talks about half the, half of its time but how to reconvert or how to remodulate that model into a public health model requires a lot of effort lot of uh, like you know education lot of understanding lot of uh, what's called discussion and also we have to find out in a fine tune uh, with the current uh, health model we cannot just say that you know okay now we will take over this part of the healthcare model and you believe that we will we will be responsible for that it is not it is not like that we have to have very specific health models which which only ayush can provide for example keeping people healthy is definitely something only ayurveda can provide or ayush can provide and that is something which we can take up as the major part of uh, healthcare delivery and if we we are able to convince and if you are able to convince the community if you are able to convince the government if you are able to convince the uh, society that being healthy and uh, being uh, be, being better being not ill is definitely because ayurveda or ayush has been a part of your life then we become very prominent and if we become prominent in india we become prominent in other parts of the world and like you know like for example in other parts of the world ayurveda has not yet faced the big pharma we are just far away from the big pharma even now uh, big pharma has not even looked at us we are still under the radar you know like but the moment uh, we start facing the big big pharma or big lobbies which actually control the health systems and pharmaceutical business outside the country we will face real tough challenge there so before we go there we need to strengthen our roots here we have to be seen as one of the leading uh, leading reasons for better health in india lower cost for health in india or in sri lanka or in uh, or, or in nepal you know these are the areas where we will have to work we have to prove ourselves in these places once we prove ourselves in these places you don't require separate introduction in any other part of the world uh, uh, dr sadhana there is a very uh, interesting question because uh, it is uh, as if asking the uh, asking that you know uh, in a day whether i should only eat or whether i should only sleep or uh, whether i should only work you know like uh, it is it is a combination of all this that uh, makes life so similarly uh, uh, we are in such a situation where we cannot only focus on one part of whatever you said you said everything and uh, mo uh, most of the possibilities that uh, ayurveda community should be looking at and it should have a very a very fine balance you know like this balance includes uh, uh, proper communication other than what you said to the community uh, creating uh, like uh, creating evidence of good evidence you know like that is also something which is important so uh, and community communicating that to the community uh, creating bridges uh, within the community forget about uh, the current health system because if the current health system it is you should always remember that it is not the health system that is existing that is keeping uh, uh like uh, it, it is not the health system that will decide whether we are in or not it is always the community that will decide whether we are in or not and for that as vinayakan said we have to create structures of, of our own and 
if whenever necessary integrated with the other health system uh, and uh, you, everything that you said is important because we cannot say that you know one of them is more important than the other uh, a good research uh, good education um, um, like uh, uh, like uh, uh, basic research uh, uh, entrepreneurship and uh, pressurizing the policy makers uh, bringing out the bringing out the fact that it is uh, um, people's uh, people's stories. Uh, there are multitude of things which are part of this uh, discussion which should come into the uh, into the forefront, which will allow us to uh, move forward as a community. Uh, and I'm I'm sorry, but I am not able to come out with one single uh, area where we should be focusing. I think that all the areas are important, and there is enough number of people in this. Uh, uh, in the Ayurveda community to take care of each of these areas you know like for uh, uh, if you want to become uh, become an entrepreneur you have the possibility of doing that if you want to become a basic science uh, 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 you know worker you can become a researcher you can become that you want to become a clinician you want to become a like good educational models uh, all these things are possible and the, all these things are necessary and what we basically require is a very strong leadership in, you know, let me, let me, I'm not, uh, like, uh, I'm not trying to say that one, uh, I'm not trying to compare anywhere with anything else, but let me just tell you one single thing, uh, throughout this, uh, I had been, I had been, I had been here from, uh, 23rd of February and working closely and a little bit far away and, you know, then closely with the Ministry of Ayush. The, and there is a lot of work which is happening across the country and one of the main things which I see, I, especially from the, uh, from the from the central government ministry that I see is a uh, one single policy maker who is making a major difference in the entire aspect of whatever is happening, because uh, somebody like that, you know, for example, the sec I'm I'm talking about the secretary of Ayush, the one single person I, I I can see the kind of work and the kind of necessity of the kind of policy making strengths that somebody requires to take these things the kind of kind of uh, problems that person is facing as, as as a secretary of Ayush had it not been somebody who had this kind of an interest in Ayurveda or Ayush and would take any kind of uh, what is it called pressure to overcome and pressurize other people and other situations to fall in place to overcome obstacles many of the things which we are talking as on today uh, uh, right now on the ground would not have happened you know? there is lot of lot of work which has gone I'm not talking about one person, please imagine it, I'm talking about the entire ministry, but there should be somebody who is leading that. So we want this kind of a leadership in policy making. We want uh, like people like uh, Krishna Kumarji who can, who can uh, like, you know, advise the governments in, in at higher levels in different areas, in different, uh, different sectors uh, to, uh, to, to, to lead the things. So, and we require a very responsive industry. We require a very, uh, very responsible academia. I could see all of them happening, but I wish the, there was one single thread which is flowing through all this, which I could find, and I I could find that it was uh, the secretary of Ayush. You know, like I'm, I'm not just even mentioning one single name, but what I'm saying is, you require something like that to happen. You require a very strong leadership for all these things to happen, and we, a unrelenting leadership with a with a vision and a time uh, uh, time bound vision, a time bound to reach somewhere. Come to an, uh, so, what is that one insight that this pandemic has brought in, and you would like to share it with the Ayurvedic community? Uh, it is uh, um, like uh, that is a good question because. Uh, there are many, uh, as I said, but one thing which I should say is that preparedness, you know, we were caught unprepared for this pandemic and we are still preparing. So one thing, if you want to be a part of uh, ep epidemic management, if you want to be a part of pandemic management, if you want to be a part of health emergency, uh, you have to be prepared for it. You cannot fight a fire without knowing how to fight a fire. You have to have many drills. You have to fight. You have to know how to switch off a gas to before you actually uh, think about you know how you will actually uh, think about if a gas cylinder will burst. You know, so you cannot learn all these things. So there are hundreds and thousands of occasions which you, occasions which the health system goes through for us to learn it step by step. We were far away from there. We didn't do that, or rather, we didn't do it in a collective manner. It, it was a, it, it was a it, it was an emergency situation that made us, that evoke us and made us do this and learn this. 
I think we should not forget this. And uh, this is a great learning for Ayurveda and Ayush systems altogether, or entire traditional systems which are organized. You cannot wait for something to happen, something very, very bad to happen to the current health system to say that, okay, now we will also try to do something. We have to start finding out parallel ways of working with the health system and to, uh, not not trying trying to be competitive, uh, sir, but trying to find our own spaces uh, where nobody else can compete with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're talking about the insurance company. How how is it, uh, this insurance company supporting Ayurveda, and how is government looking up to it? That is one question that has come up. The first question that has come up. Very, very, very important that insurance companies should support uh, uh, Ayush systems and uh, there has been a lot of development which had happened uh, in this uh, regard. Uh, I am sure that you know there are better uh, better persons to speak about this in this quorum uh, than me. I think uh, Mr. Rajiv Vasudevan is here who has done a lot of work in this direction. He might be able to uh, give better ideas about this but but my suggestion, my, my understanding is that uh, government uh, the, uh, has worked with the Insurance Regulatory Development Authority of India (IRDA) and uh, made sure that you know at least certain uh, insurance uh, com uh, certain provisions are made by all insurance companies so that Ayurveda is a part of their insurance uh, insurance policies and they had also uh, in, like because of this you know there are several insurance companies that come out with. Uh, with uh, uh, what's it called supportive um, supportive mechanisms for using I am um, using insurance but more than this we should also look at the uh, look at the current uh, possibility which has come out with the Ayushman Bharat scheme where uh, Ayurveda has been invo included uh, for different treatment method like you know processes and uh, like uh, uh, so it allows a person uh, within the uh, with, within the financial uh, financially uh, unsecure situation also to uh, to avail of Ayurvedic therapies and uh, and and modalities and uh, and and get uh, uh, financially covered because I uh, I understand that the that the funding is directly given to the hospital for for uh, providing such kind of a treatment and uh, like you know there, there is a direct connection between the person the hospital and uh, the payment from the government's part you know through through the scheme so uh, there are several schemes which are which had come up one of the most important from public health perspective is Ayushman Bharat scheme and the inclusion of it in uh, uh, inclusion of uh, uh, Ayurveda into it the second one is the working with the IRDA and making sure that private insurance companies or other health insurance companies have been requested to include Ayurveda as part of their uh, portfolios which they are selling and according to which several of the companies have uh, come out with Ayurveda alone or uh, like you know same as uh, same respect as uh, modern medicine kind of a, like you know a pol insurance policies for health coverage in India. Uh, uh, more details uh, you know I, I might not be able to give because I am not the person who had been dealing directly with insurance uh, policies in India. So uh, my information might be wrong so I would refrain from making any such Sir, comments on that. Thank you so much for that question. Maybe we'll go for one more question that is from Dr. Niman. Uh, he types there is no doubt that Ayurveda encountered a crisis of this scale in the past as there are direct references about it in the text. But what in your opinion were the limitations Ayurveda faced at those times when implementing its modalities at those times? Are these limitations still there? If yes, how can we overcome them? Oh, it's, a, it's a very, very uh, complicated question. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, when we talk about uh, Ayurveda has encountered a crisis of the scale in the past, it could start from uh, the very references of Janabadha from Siya uh, from from Sushuda or you know Charaka and you know, all those period. So uh, we have, but what we should look at is uh, the recent times when I, uh, Ayurveda has come across this kind of uh, uh, like uh, epidemics where uh, like let us say uh, dengue fever is an epidemic which we come across every year. Uh, malaria is another epidemic which of course Dr. Vinayak and, uh, is working on in, in, in Bihar and you know in, in Sharkand areas. So uh, there are there are several instances but our major major problem as a public health uh, initiative is that we uh, we have not been able to come out with our own our own infrastructure to deliver this. We have not been able to come out with a single simple uh, easily available modality which could be scaled up across the country 
uh, or even if we had been able to uh, come out with a modality, we have not been able to get the policy makers to take it up and you know, and and put finance uh, like um, uh, behind that. You know, put they didn't put the money behind what they wanted to talk about or what they wanted to do. So uh, we what we what we faced at the earlier period, we are still facing. I'm not talking about what happened at Sushut's period or you know in Charak's uh, time where uh, Ch Charaka, I, I don't I don't remember exactly. Either Charaka or Sushuta really specifically says that when you come across such uh, Mahavyadis, you know you should actually move out of the place and keep distance from people, etc., etc. So there are specific references to it. I, I do, and I, I do, I'm not in a situation to imagine what are the complications and what are the difficulties they would have faced. But in the car in the recent times, the 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 things which they have uh, uh, like the Ayurvedic people or Ayurvedic community would have faced is almost the same as what we are facing right now. There has been no improvement from some uh, from uh, from the time when in 1960, if, uh, if if there was an epidemic and Ayurvedic community was trying to address it, there has been not much of an improvement from that condition to this condition because we have not been prepared. We didn't evolve with that. We have more more information. There are more people practicing Ayurveda. There are more there is more uh, community belief than 1960 in uh, in ayurveda at this particular moment uh, i i think so but uh, but uh, we have not been able to uh, build up the uh, like the the channels by which ayurveda can influence public health or intervene in public health uh, and and that has almost been the same you know like even though we have uh, more uh, more uh, what's it called clinical facilities we are part of phc etc we don't have the we have we don't have the upper layer uh, above the phcs where decisions can be independently made where resources can be independently identified where other uh, other aspects of the governance can be called for for support directly by an ayurvedic or an ayush uh, ayush intervention group so uh, unless and until these policy changes happen at the upper level and the 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 the, the, the mechanism for converting those policy decisions into actual work in the phc level happens uh, we are still far away so in 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 that sense uh, we are still in the period of 1960s 1940s 1940 like you know maybe be, be, be before uh, independence also we are at the same level even though we have more infrastructure in terms of people working on the ground we have more dispensaries we have more clinics etc we lack the mechanism which connects the connects the policy maker to the dispensaries in an independent manner and we also lack the mechanism by which the policy maker who is an Irish uh, person can make independent health system decisions and call for resources at his or own or uh, her own uh, decision making capa capabilities so if that has if that can happen then there will be a change which is the most urgent thing which we need to build over the probably the next five years uh, into the health system and and that will make it stronger so the next question is from dr animesh sir if healthcare in the world is governed by the pharma industry fortunately ayurveda pharma is also million dollar business why they are not coming forward in front line to fight with chemical pharma sector Uh, in fact, uh, um, uh, Dr. Animesh, that's a very good question. But the, but uh, to be frank, you know, like Ayurveda Pharma is a is a very very small segment in terms of uh, the pharmaceutical business. Uh, uh, and and we look at Ayurveda Pharma, uh, we have to understand that you know, like it is only very few uh, in number in in terms of the large uh, volumes of business that we are talking about and the kind of profitability we can think about. Rest of them are not so big enough to uh, to stand up and you know and 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 fight with the big pharma. Uh, in fact, uh, in fact, the narrative in, within the society or within the community is also skewed uh, through communications and you know and and constant uh, ways of uh, ways of uh, what's it called um, uh, managing the uh, community engagement by the modern medical pharma or pharma group or modern medical community itself. Uh, that you know, it is it is more skewed towards the modern medical pharma and modern medical industry and the modern medical uh, modern medical uh, health system or health structure. So it, it is it is not it, we should of course the, I I wouldn't say that the Ayurveda come, Ayurveda pharma industry should come out more, but uh, we have to understand that uh, the sustainability of the Ayurveda pharma as an independent entity is not as uh, as easy and as uh, as simple as for the modern medical pharma it is it is more competitive their 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 um, their business uh, area is much smaller 
their cap the the customers are much lesser in number their profit margins uh, even though slightly more probably but uh, it takes long time to re realize that profit uh, from the from the community um, and uh, and there are several other hindrances to the which is faced by the ayurvedic pharma including raw materials which has which takes time to uh, cultivate and develop it is not properly available uh, like there are many things which we can talk about and and the bad perception which is given out by one uh, one single product being uh, being having a heavy metal content or something and which is published across the globe regarding uh, like ayurvedic medicine or ayush medicine uh, etc being poisonous to like you know humans and unsafe to humans etc you know there is a lot of a uh, lot of uh, subtle uh, work happening against the ayurveda pharma and the ayurveda pharma is not strong enough uh, uh to uh, to have an independent uh, stand and secondly the the community stand is not so uh, like so favorable to ayurveda pharma as it is favorable to the to the allopathic pharma uh, in terms of number so these are things which we need to work on over a period of time and change and and that is possible to change it we need to have very good communication and uh, get the community with us once you have the community with us then probably uh, the ayurvedic pharma itself will be able to uh, will be able to uh, support this kind of activity but until and until that happens it, it takes some time the next question is that <clears throat> do you have some information about integrative management studies going on in icu or in emergency department integrative management uh, regarding uh, regarding covid yes uh uh no I, i'm sorry i do not know I, I i do not know about anything that is happening in an icu or or uh, or uh, critical care department related to covid uh, i know that in a few of the uh, hospitals uh, across the, across the country are using yoga as an intervention but you know but because of the difficulty of uh, being in the covid ward and asking people to breathe and you know being present the, uh, we are also they, they are also finding it difficult to intervene uh, as as a as a therapy so it is now being uh, discussed with the patient uh, person to person over the telephone etc etc but how effective it is we do not know uh, uh, and and there is one or two one clinical trial which has been registered uh, and is available in the ctra which talks about advanced ca cases in, uh, in 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 uh, in of pneumonia uh, but i do not know whether that clinical trial has started uh where where in, where, uh, where uh, an ayush uh, intervention has been used but uh, otherwise you know, I, i do not have information about Sir, this uh, dr deepa uh, has asked what is the biggest challenge that ayurveda is facing to step up in situation like the present one be it research or public health support i think you have answered is there anything more you would like to add to this question sir the biggest challenge no, no again we have to build up we have to be prepared the biggest challenge is not uh, not the infrastructure not the people not the knowledge it is a preparedness that we lack and if you are not prepared uh, then we should say that we are ignorant and therefore we lack knowledge so and if you are still uh, uh, having knowledge and not preparing then we, sh we should call ourselves as idle so i think uh, we have a lot of uh, like introspection to do we have a lot of work to do and we have to understand that modern medicine is standing where it is not because it is only not only because of evidence actually you should understand that in the current covid era you that is the most easiest thing to understand that it is not evidence that is running uh, the the medical decisions it is basically probabilities that is running the medical decisions you know you just look to, look at hydroxychloroquine and just look at the kind of uh, like you know the the advisories clinical advisories coming out from the best of the non medical institutions across the globe you know they are not they are not they are all probabilities they are not evidence based medicine when they, then when when they come back to you say that bring out evidence tell us we want to talk about evidence based medicine ayurveda is not evidence based medicine therefore we cannot use it now is a time to realize that it is not evidence based medicine it is the capability of our, our, our as a, us as an institution as a infrastructure as a procedure as information as people and as a as, as an organization and as an organized sector to enter into the community uh, and and give medicine you know that is that is lacking 
and we have the information we have the knowledge we have the research we have everything but still we are not able to go in there because we lack the vehicle to go in we have to build that vehicle and nobody is going to build that vehicle for us other than us we have to work for that we have a question from mr rajiv vasudev uh, thank you for your insightful observations dr geeta krishnan is there any effort to conduct ayurveda prophylaxis or add on studies in any overseas geographies particularly those with a large local nri community and where the government is receptive oh that's a, a good, good question because that is also related to what uh, the the uh, government of india is trying to do uh, it, it is my knowledge I, i cannot be sure of it but i i know that the government is keenly working with the external affairs ministry and several of the institutions across the globe to uh, identify uh, institutions and uh, and create government to government understanding to replicate uh, the national uh, uh, protocols or the or, or the or the uh, or, or the four drug trials which they are doing here uh, across uh, ac- across the border and uh, of course you know like uh, communities which which have a huge number of nra population is one of the target 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 areas there are other communities where ayurveda is already regulated and accepted and there are other communities where ayurveda is there as a herbal medicine and you know is being practiced uh, through modern medical practitioners there are other communities where uh, the need of the hour is to have a medicine which can uh, reduce the severity of the disease etc so Uh, uh in my knowledge uh, there this work is going on in several layers and several uh, several uh, dimensions uh, and i hope that you know uh, like something uh, something of this sort will come out and the multi centric trial will actually become a multi national trial which will and and compete with the solidarity trial what who is doing uh, and you know and then come out with uh, probably uh, better results than what they have what what they can come out with okay so maybe the the uh, last question that we are going for the session today sir ayurveda being an age old science having enough literature backing and right now it seems that modern science didn't have much of the knowledge of this brimming pandemic even so on the basis of the recent facts and symptom symptomatology they are fa- foremost in treating the science can ayurveda fraternity unite and handle this situation district wise Uh, again uh, that should have been the case but unfortunately we d- uh, like you know uh, first of all uh, corona uh, uh, the, the disease of co- the covid 19 did not did not come into india as if it is not no- before it was known it was known as a very do- dangerous disease uh, nations across the globe were uh, were were you know gearing up for it uh, we were expecting uh, a huge number of uh, people to be infected and then looking at the current trend of 5 to 7 percentage of the people uh, like if you look at the current uh, data which is available uh, like across the globe it is anything between 5 and 7 percentage of the people who have died so looking at that we were expecting that you know india is going to face a major major problem and it was it is it is still a major health emergency and we were expecting much much wilder variety of uh, variety of uh, morbidity and you know, mortality rate in india but fortunately that did not happen we have to find out why it not happen and we also should think whether traditional medicine had been one of the reasons why this had uh, why this did not happen in this particular uh, gruesome manner but uh, what you rightly said is the it there should have been the right outcome you know like we should also have been able to treat uh, covid patients we should have been able to manage covid patient at least in the mild mild to moderate variety and you know and then shift them uh, seamlessly across to the modern medical uh, fraternity when where <coughs> they could offer uh, like you know a ventilator support or other other critical management support that is not possible because first of all we don't have an integrated process where in which uh, they, first of all we lack trust within the system where in which the the two systems are, can work seamlessly together or the professionals of the two systems can work together seamlessly we have to build that trust second we have to build the mechanisms of referrals which are very intact and very very perfect and which cannot be overruled by anybody unless and until it is a trial or a study we have to have very specific systems where in which uh, we 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 can show that 
health system need not be so costly need not be high technology intensive uh, you know medical care it can be low cost settings where where traditional medicine can practice and take care of most of the diseases up to a stage where modern medicine interventions are not required uh, and you know like these are these are building blocks which we should bring into the public health program which we want to build up and this this is exactly what i said we had the information we had the knowledge we had we have the people we have the will we have everything but we didn't have the mechanism to do all these things we are still lacking that and this is a wake up call for us covid 19 is a wake up call for the traditional medicine community across the globe it is specifically a wake up call for the government of india and the state governments of india to understand that there is a latent or rather real active uh, knowledge and uh, practitioners available within the community and you are discarding their utility by not using them appropriately but even if you go and tell this to a policy maker they might understand it but still you have to understand that they cannot put it in practice because the mechanisms are not there so the most important part which we should do as vinayakan rightly said is to build up the build up the mechanisms you know build up the infrastructure wherein which we are able to deliver uh, th this infrastructure is this infrastructure is not uh, uh, what's what's it called clinical practice uh, uh, gated. It is actually public health gated. The, it requires two different perspectives. Even if you have a medicine which is hundred percentage effective and you can only treat hundred patients, when you have four million patients outside, it, you, it is better to have a pa medicine which is seventy percentage effective and you can bring it to, out to all the four million people. You know, <coughs> so. So this this kind of perspective difference is huge between clinical practice medicine and public health medicine. We need to understand this, and that that is where the bridging has to happen. There has to be a lot of a discussion on this. There has to be slow building up into it. We have to learn where we where the, where there were obstacles for Irish practice, where there were enablers for uh, enablers for Irish practice within the COVID system or during an endemic and uh, the uh, epidemic, and then we should uh, we should build upon that. Thank you so much, sir. That was really insightful. But I would like to repeat what you said. The COVID-19 is a wake-up call and what is la lacking is the readiness of the Ayurvedic community. And we have to be ready with the infrastructure. Sir, thank you so much for joining in and wishing you all the best for all the uh, projects that you are carrying out there. Thank you so much. So we, we are uh, stopping the Q&A now. Then we can go to the next session. Thank you so much, sir. Kitashan, sir, thank you so much for joining in.